Hello, everyone. So I wanted to just continue talking about learning Rust because it's quite challenging, I would say, especially if you've come from Python background or if you're learning to code from scratch. I know there's different views on whether you would actually want to start learning to code using Rust. I think personally, I would say maybe do learn Python or some other uh, interpreted language first, i.e. Python, JavaScript, so on. Uh, I learned Visual Basic first, so I don't want to admit to that really, but um, yeah, there we go. So first thing I want to just quickly show you is my website, Red and Green. If you're not familiar with it, then I've been putting some more articles on there recently, especially with regard to topics related to Rust. So you can see recent posts. I've been looking at the builder pattern, unit tests in Rust, Anyhow, which we'll look at in a second, the default trait, as ref, as moot, and this, which is what I've learned so far. I just started using MindMeister, I believe it's called. Um, it allows you to do a mind map, and I just wanted to kind of put together all the things which I've been doing recently, purely so that I can go back and revisit them all in turn and just check that I haven't forgotten anything. Because one of the dangers is I th think once you start learning stuff, you forget the old stuff because new shiny thing takes over. So um, I'm gradually going to add to this. And what I'm going to do at regular intervals, i.e. the spaced repetition, is revisit each of those and check that I can still code these from scratch without looking at any notes. Chances are I, should, I hope to be able to do about 80% of maybe, even if I don't look at the notes, as long as I can do it by using the compiler error messages, then I would view that as a success. So. Uh, these are in no particular order. Um, what I will just focus on, though, is blockchain. So I looked at a blockchain example in Rust several months ago. And at the time, my knowledge wasn't quite as good as it is now. So I've come back to it. And a few things do actually make a bit more sense now. Um, albeit I've forgotten one of the two things which I did learn back then. So I think second time you look at something, a lot more pieces of the jig jigsaw fit together. I've also been using ChatGPT and I paste in a block of code and I kind of get a second opinion. And I know ChatGPT is basically a, a predictive search engine, isn't it? But um, it is actually helping a bit. And it's, I think probably ChatGPT is better than going on Stack Overflow sometimes. So yeah, I've just kind of just noted the topic and then kind of the subtopics. So for instance, the blockchain uh, clone gets used, uh, repeat gets used, repeat gets used for the difficulty. So if you know about, particularly with Bitcoin, you've got a leading sequence of zeros, which form contribute towards the difficulty. So what you're doing is you're producing loads of hashes until you get one that comes out with enough zeros at the start, i.e. on the on the left hand side. Um, hasher, SHA2, SIRDE, SIRDE JSON. So if we go and I'm not going to go and look at that yet. I'll probably do a video soon on. So this is somebody else's code. I think I've probably, ref... I have actually, I don't say probably, I have referred to the link to it in this article. So go red and green, go to Rust, what I've learned in 2023. And about halfway down is the link to the article, which um, I'm trying to learn from. So I'm pretty much taking each chunk. When I say chunk, there's a block chain and then there's a block RS. So really it's two files and then you've got your main. Um, and again, once you come to this page and scroll down, it will give you the link to, uh, there's the main look. So you set the difficulty. So that's basically saying you want one zero at the start of the, um, the hash that you're generating. Um, with Bitcoin, as the difficulty adjustment, in, as the difficulty increases with more miners and faster A6, then if, for instance, if this was Bitcoin, then that difficulty would be, I don't know, is it about 17? Something like that. Of 17 uh, zeros at the start. So then you create the blockchain, which uses uh, a new function, and then you you add a block. So if you wanted to kind of create a blockchain simulator, you would just put this line in a loop, and every interval, say 
10 seconds, one minute, 10 minutes. If you wanted to do 10 minutes to be like, like uh, Bitcoin, you could put 10 minutes there and just loop over and keep adding blocks to your chain. So that's to come. That's going to be in the future. Um, so now I'm just actually revisiting anyhow, because if you watch the Jeremy Chone videos, you'll see him use anyhow quite a lot. And it's just good. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to just quickly show this demo just on just to wrap up because I know a lot of videos they'll either be just talky talky bits, which uh, it's good and it's interesting, but you probably watch it and then you don't go away and practice anything or take anything away. So, if you've not yet used anyhow, then probably this is just a good reminder that um, it's not so difficult and it's something that you could probably learn in ten minutes. Um, so this is the code. The main function here, I've put the divide function here. So the divide function obviously falls over when you try and divide something by zero. And this is really the, the important thing. You're, putting, you're creating an error message here. But because the result, and obviously the error, the, the result error enums, um, they, they bubble up using this question mark. And you'll hear, it, you'll hear about it bubbling up. The error bubbles up. So... You've used this, and because this uses the result from anyhow, when the result is an error, question mark says send it to anyhow to deal with. So that's my crude description of it. So it works, there's no error. If we change uh, our input to zero, and then we run it, then we get the count divide by zero error. So it's just an, a neat way of error handling, really, without having to do the match statement or being lazy and using unwrap. Because really, unwrap is kind of lazy. I think if you read the unwrap a documentation, it says don't use it in production, which is probably a wise thing to do, or, or wise advice to follow, rather. So that's it for this video. I hope you've just enjoyed this quick look at anyhow. Um, really, it's all about the question mark. And it, it just allows you to use the question mark to bubble up your error to main in your main function. So if you had several different functions, you just use the question mark. And if they were all implementing the error message from anyhow, then question mark is a lot easier than type in a match statement. And it's a lot better than using unwrap. That's my understanding of it. If if that's not correct, then please leave a comment. And in the meantime, yeah, feel free to read my recent articles on redandgreen.co.uk. So thanks for watching and I'll be back soon.